Hello world, this is Dennis, and uh, back on Christmas Eve, I made a video of my, uh, the inside of my uh, ham shack. So now I decided to do a video of a whole nine yards, uh, from the antenna all the way to the inside, showing off the various uh, antennas, cables, wires, radios, all that good stuff that I'm using for this antenna setup. So the first thing I want to show you is my HF antenna, which I've made some adjustments to. Um, still going with the inverted L setup, and if you remember from my last video, the feed point here wasn't so close to the ground, it was higher up. Um, that's because it was uh, winter time and I wanted it to be, you know, above the where the snow would be so I could get at it easier. Now I've got set up for um, easier grounding. Now, I have been able to make some adjustments to this uh, inverted L. Um, First thing here, the main wire here, um, my I was able to get higher up into the tree. I'm not going to show you the whole length because it gets lost up in the branches quite easily. So, But anyhow, um, getting back on point, the neighbor came over with this extension ladder and helped me get higher into the tree. So um, the vertical portion is about now 30 feet up in the air and the horizontal is over 50 feet long. Then, just for the heck of it, I've decided to kind of turn this into a fan vertical. So, this wire right here, um, this is the 20 meter element. And then, this wire here, that's for 17 meters. And then, just for the heck of it, I got a slinky here. Yes, I'm obsessed with slinkies. I've said it over and over and over again. Don't know why, but I just like using them for my antennas. And I know after, you know, seeing some videos, do some research, SWR doesn't necessarily mean how efficient your antenna is, but uh, this thing now has a little SWR on 20 meters. I haven't checked the other bands, but I can actually, you know, talk on 20 meters without having to turn on the tuner. So that's nice. So there's the antenna portion. Now let's look at uh, grounding and ground radials. So this wire here, that goes to the um, eight foot ground rod, which I drove uh, about seven feet into the ground. That was a bit of a process, <laughs> but I did it. I was able to do it all by myself. Um, <sighs> This didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to. I was hoping that I could take the wire and just, you know, thread this bolt through it. But the connector that I was using on this wasn't big enough. The uh, bolt wasn't going through it properly. So I kind of ju I just uh, stripped the wire, you know, stripped this off the uh, shield, wrapped the uh, copper wire around here, and then screwed this on. I'll have to change that later. Um, Maybe get like a, um, a hose clamp and see if I can see if that would work better. And then <clears throat> this wire here goes to this pipe, which I have this um, copper um, bracket here. And this is why I got my uh, ground radials attached to. Um, these here, um, four over here and four over here, these are made by MFJ. I can't remember what the model number is. So that's eight radials, and then, let's see here, that's one, two, three, four, so that's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. That's about 18 to 19 ground radials. Um, they're all various lengths. Uh, basically, I was just working with whatever wire I have. And I know that, you know, this is, basically the radials are supposed to go, like, go out in a circle. But, um, that's the one problem with uh, having your antenna in the middle of two houses. I got a house over here. I got a house over here, and I forgot where exactly our property ends, so I don't want them, the wires going too far over this way into the neighbor's lawn. So, yes, that's a compromise setup. But, you know, so far I'm getting good results. Um, I've talked to South America, East Coast, West Coast, so 
my signal's getting out there, so I'm happy with the results. And just as a receiving antenna, it's also doing a really good job. Now let's just uh, take a quick walk over here, and I'll show you. Whoops, getting tangled up in the ground radials. <laughs> That's uh, another project for another day, getting that all buried. But um, this is my VHF UHF antenna. Um, it's a MFJ, I think it's. I think the model number is 1754, I can't remember exactly, but it's just a simple vertical ground plane antenna. And that's what I'm using for VHF, uh, UHF. The coax, um, can't remember what type of coax this is, but, uh, well, let's see here. It's, uh, uh, let's see here, it's, I just saw it, oh. RG8X, okay, which is, from what I understand, your, your, you know, your basic coax. That's what I'm using for the UHF, VHF, and uh, for my HF antenna, I'm using this, uh, this better stuff that's, um, it's for direct burial, um, got from him, radial outlet, um, RG8-U, it looks like, I got the XF length uh, wrapped around the tree here because this is either a 75 or a 50 foot length of coax. I can't remember exactly. I'll have to look it up, but that's what I'm using for the coax. And let me pause this and show you where it's going into the shack. Okay, so this is how I get the coax into the shack. It's the Comet CTC-50M. Uh, I got uh, two of these. Gonna have to get some more because I want to I want to put up um, an Invis dipole, and I want to get my Alpha Delta uh, DXSWL um, listening shortwave antenna back into the air. So there's going to be a lot more coax coming out of this window. Now the reason why I go, I'm going with this is the windows they slide this way; they're not the up and down type. So I can't get like one of those MFJ um, pass-throughs where you can just you know wedge it in there because obviously window's too tall for that. That's not going to work, so I'm having to rely on these uh, Comet window pass-throughs. Um, this is the HF, or the coax for the HF antenna, and then this is for the UHF VHF antenna. Okay, so the coax I'm using inside the house is the same as the outside, um, just obviously shorter lengths. Um, for the HF antenna, I'm using the same, uh, what was that, RG8-U or whatever that was, the direct berry stuff. And um, the one for the 2-meter, uh, 70 meter radial, I'm not going to show you because I have to try to get the camera underneath here, but you, you get the general idea. But um, anyhow, for the HF antenna, this goes into this uh, Alpha Delta-4 antenna switch. And eventually, I want to get the rest of these filled up with antennas. <laughs> Why? Because I want to. And um, that goes here to this antenna switch here. Um, the Workman Model CX-3 um, coax antenna switch. Um, this is for HF. Um, this one here, this one goes... Um, where does that... Oh, that was something else. Okay. This one here goes to my antenna tuner, the LDG IT100 Auto Tuner, which obviously goes here to the ICOM IC7300. Then this one here, um, this goes to this, um, what I call an antenna splitter here for my ICOM ICR. 75 and the Kenwood R2000. And then the third one is uh, not in use at, at the moment. It goes to this uh, MFJ switch here, which I had for the radios that I had up here, but I don't have them at the moment because I'm sort of downsizing the radio collection to sell off some stuff so I can buy different radios. <laughs> the Endless Cycle. Uh, let's see here. Uh, try to get down here. Sorry, it's a little bit shaky. But um, here's the VHF UHF rig. 
and that's just your simple the what is that the RG8 coax in the back here and that's uh, this and the ICOM are both ran ran by the same Samlex uh, power SEC-1235 M's um, don't have the uh, the Yesu FRG7 hooked up at the moment um, but when I do it goes to this uh, the MFJ antenna switch in the back and then the scanner I just have running off of its whip because if I want to listen to the hams that's what this is for it uses my outdoor antenna this is just listening for you know to the cops uh, EMS fire department and once the severe weather season rolls around, um, <clears throat> the uh, weather alerts from uh, NOAA, uh, National Weather Service. So that's the whole setup from outdoors to indoors. Um, obviously, I'm still making adjustments, buying equipment, trying out antennas. So stay tuned for future videos, uh, you know, for what I'm doing now. <laughs> um, hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, peace and all that good stuff. Okay, I almost forgot about this. Um, this is uh, brand new to my setup. It's an SDR Play um, RSP1A, if I remember correctly, is the model number. I forgot that's what's plugged into the third position of that uh, antenna switch. And uh, for this, I'm using um, SDR Uno, SDR Console, and HD SDR, like the switch back and forth between the three. Um, I also still have, but I don't really use anymore, um, where is it, oh yeah, my original RTL SDR, I, ever since I got the SDR play, I really don't use this thing anymore, but I'm holding on to it, you know, just in case, uh, doesn't hurt to have a backup one, so now this is the end of the video, hope you enjoyed it, and as always, peace and all that good stuff.